In this video, I'm going to be looking at setting up Session Drummer and Drum Maps. We'll find out what Drum Maps are, and the advantages of using them, and how to create our own unique maps. Here I have a project with Session Drummer in it, which is loaded in exactly the same way as the other since we've loaded. It's on a simple instrument track. Let's have a look at the interface. There are two pages to Session Drummer 3, and the first is the Drum Kit page. Here we can load drum kits, play individual drums and programs, and play back any of the MIDI patterns loaded. First thing we'll notice on this page is the drum kit graphic, and we can click on these to play any loaded kit. They will also be animated when a drum is being played. If the graphic is ghosted as it is here, it means there is no kit loaded. Below that to the left is the program management area. At the top of that is the program manager, and we can click on the drop down and load a program here. I'm going to load Steve Slate's old ZEP dry kit, which is one of those included with Sonar. A Session Drummer program is a collection of MIDI patterns to play, as well as a kit to play them, and there are many presets included, or we can create and save our own. Beneath that is the MIDI Pattern Manager, where we can load MIDI patterns, as well as drop them from here into our project. They load as part of the program. There are eight pattern slots, and we can load a different pattern into each slot, which are designated A to H. We can choose which pattern to play, and then create whole drum lines from here. Next down is the kit manager area. We can either load individual drums into the kit or load whole kits. Again, this kit loads as part of the program. Once a kit's loaded, we can click on the various graphics and Session Drummer will play that particular piece of kit. It's also possible to load individual drums by right clicking on the drum graphic. You can load regular wave samples, but if you want multiple velocity files or multiple sounds, such as an open and closed hi hat, you need to use the SFZ file format. The included files were already in this format. And there are more available on the web, for example. It's also possible to write your own, but that's beyond the scope of this video. If you want to have a go at that, load an existing SFZ file into a text editor where you can see the formatting. Once the elements are loaded, as you can see, we've played the kit by clicking on the graphics and using the patterns, but it's also possible to play it from any controller you have attached, and we looked at how to set up routing for that earlier. That was my PCR keyboard again. We can build a basic beat for a song by first of all just dragging the interface down a bit so we can see what we're doing. Then clicking on the required pattern letter, and using the drag and drop icon from the MIDI section, drop it into the track. Once that's done, we can press play and hear that. The second page is the mixer page. And this is where we can make changes to individual drum properties, such as width within the stereo field, tuning and drum volume. It's also possible to audition each drum by clicking on the graphic, as well as load kit pieces by right clicking. At the bottom is the output assignment port. This is the same concept that we looked at at TTS1 earlier. Each drum sound can be assigned to one of Session Drummer's 12 audio outputs, which in turn can be assigned to different audio tracks within Sonar. This can give us greater control over the individual sounds. See the explanation and setup of TTS1 for more detail on the synth outputs. The obvious difference between Session Drummer and TTS1 is that Session Drummer has 12 output ports as opposed to TTS's 4. They are signed by clicking on the number and changing it to the port we want. By default, they all output to port 1, and we'll leave it like that for now because we're only using one track. We'll look at more complex routing from Session Drummer later. Note that these are port output assignments, not tracks. You'll still need to insert tracks and select the relevant Session Drummer output. Now we have Session Drummer loaded and set up with a kit, Let's look at drum maps. A drum map is a virtual MIDI port that you create. You can create as many drum maps as you want. 
There are several uses for them. They allow you to map multiple drum synths to that one port, remap notes to a drum sound, mute or solo individual drum sounds in the PRV, show as many or as few drum names as you want, and reorder drum sounds to suit your needs. There are many drum maps included with Sonar, and I'm going to show you how to load a preset for editing, but also how to create one that maps drum sounds to a combination of drum sauce synths and hardware. It's possible and probably quicker to edit an existing drum map, and the method used is very similar. By creating a map from scratch though, you'll hopefully gain greater understanding of the concept. I'm going to create a very simple 8-piece kit, but made up of Session Drummer 3 and various drums for some hardware synths. The principle is the same though, so if you only have soft synths or just hardware, it's set up the same way. Once drum maps are created, you can load them into a MIDI track as an output port in exactly the same way as you would any synth. The drum map manager can be called up from the output port of a MIDI channel or from preferences. If you load it from preferences, you will need to see the advanced tab. Let's take a quick look at the interface we'll be using first. At the very top, we have buttons for adding and deleting drum maps. Note that this is to or from the current project, not from your system. Any drum maps already open in the project will show here as well. Drum maps are saved and deleted from the system by using the preset controls here. These are the controls we will use to save our newly created drum map, and note that you need to have at least one drum map in the current project for the presets to be available for selection. To the left we have a group of controls for adding and deleting notes, as well as an undo button. Beneath that is the rows window, where assignments are made for in and out notes, drums are named, and the properties for the drum set. Beneath that is the ports and channels display, which lists each port and channel pairing in use in the map. Here is where we can change bank and patch globally for any of the ports used. To load a preset, simply a matter of creating a new map slot by clicking the new button at the top. Then we select a preset from the drop down menu. As you can see, there's several hundred that come with Sonar, but we're gonna load one of the GM kits. We can use this map as it is, or edit it to suit. Most of how to do that we'll be looking at shortly when we create our map, but it's worth mentioning if you wish to change the output port for all drums, you can do that by holding down Control and Shift as you change one of the ports. As you can see, my output port here is assigned to one of my hardware synths. To change that to Session Drummer, hold down Control and Shift, click on it, and select Session Drummer from the drop-down. You can now see that all of the output ports have changed. Remember, if you make any changes that you want to save globally, then save it using these controls. The changes made here are saved within the project, so there's no need to do that if it's only a change for this project. Let's add another drum mat to the project, but this time we'll create it from scratch. This is for demonstration purposes, so it's probably not going to sound the most together drum kit you'll have ever heard, but will hopefully give you an idea of what can be done and how to do it. We now have a currently blank drum map, so let's add some drums. If you are creating using synths with non-GM mappings, you'll probably need their manuals for note assignments. Click on the New Row button. This inserts a row into the note pane where we can assign the in note. This is the note that you need to play to get this row to sound, and it's entirely up to you what it is. I'm going to use 36, set by double clicking, as that's the MIDI default for a kick drum, but you can enter any note number you want here. Whatever you enter is the note number you play to trigger this. Next is the out note, this is the note number of the drum you want to sound, and is usually preset by the synth. In this case, it's the same note number, 36, so we enter that here. In the name field, we enter any name that we want, something descriptive like kick drum. Following that is the MIDI channel number this note will be using, which in most cases for drums is 10, but you can change it if you wish. Next up is the output port. We select the port we want to use from those available, and for this drum, I'm using a Casio CTK671. Note that once we've selected that, the CTK671 port appears in the port list, and we can now select bank and patches from here. Velocity and velocity scale I'll leave at the default for now. Next, I'm going to put in a side stick sound using Session Drummer. So once more, we click New to add another row. The in note for this is going to be 37, as is the out note. This time from the out port, we'll select Session Drummer. Once more, the synth appears in the port list. There's no need to choose a bank or patch because it's already set from the soft synth. 
Note that we can audition rows at any time by highlighting and pressing Shift plus Spacebar. If you don't hear sound from Session Drummer, just check the audio engine's turned on in the transport module, and there's definitely an instrument loaded on that note. I've hurried this process up a little bit, but the last sound I'm going to put in is a symbol from my SR16, which uses non-standard note numbers. You can see that I already have a low tom from that mapped to a different out note from the in note. Note 45, the GM note for a low tom, is mapped to note 44, which is actually the low tom on the SR16. Notice as well that the row above that also uses note 44 as an out note, the GM note for a pedal hi-hat. This is mapped to a different synth though, in this case Session Drummer. It's quite possible to use the same note on different ports if you wish. I've already entered note 51 for the in note, which is a GM note for a ride symbol, and I'm going to map that to note 69, which is one of the ride symbols on the SR16. I set the name, and then the output port. Now that I've finished setting it up, let's have a quick look at reordering the rows, which is done by simply click and dragging the row to where we want it. That way you can reorder your drums however you like them. Once we're happy with the map, we're going to save as a preset for use in future projects by clicking in the preset name box, giving it a meaningful name, and then clicking save. Once we've finished there, we click OK. Once we exit the drum map manager, we're back in our project, and we'll now see our drum map available as an output for MIDI tracks. We can of course assign a controller input and play the hit from that. Or alternatively, drag MIDI patterns into it, rewind, and use playback to play the patterns through the map. And considering that that kit's made up from four different synths, it's not too bad. We'll be using drum maps again when we look at the step sequencer. Of course you can map any synth via the drum map, it doesn't have to be drums, but it may be a little unusual to have a different sound on each key for other instruments. But if you're after a special effect or inspiration, experiment and see what you come up with.